Um, all right, let's, uh, let's begin by turning to John chapter 15. And um, <clears throat> I'm, what I'm going to be talking about <clears throat> this session, and if there's any miracles left, I, it'll be only this session, the manner of fruit bearing, <clears throat> manner of fruit bearing. John uh, 15, verse 16. You did not choose me. Can I get amen? Yes. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. <clears throat> okay? Um, <clears throat> most of you know John 12, 24, and except the seed fall in the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So I'm just going to read a little bit here. As Christians, we all will agree that we have been chosen by the Lord for the purpose of bringing forth fruit. But most have a ministerial view of that according to religious truth. Think of that. I've been chosen to bring forth fruit, and we have some sort of ministry view of that, some sort of christian do something for God view of that instead of you've been chosen for death. <clears throat> um, consider John 12:24. 24. Um, I'll just read it again. Yes, I'll read it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. In other words, no fruit. Um, did you, Caitlin, did you bring that little thing that you wrote about the woman, the man who married a woman and died and this and that? You, the way you wrote it was really good. It, it would fit in here, but it's going to fit almost anywhere if you, if next time bring it or whatever. Okay, break it out. <clears throat> um, Except the corn of wheat fall in the ground and die, it abideth long. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. Okay, so he's saying you need to die because if you love your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life, you're going to gain much fruit. Um, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Okay, so he's not just saying, look, <clears throat> okay. You got to, there's two pictures going on here. You got Jesus standing there teaching this to the disciples, and you've got this picture, spiritual reality as he knows it compared to this world, and he says he's not pointing to himself as teacher. He's pointing here, and he's saying, except a seed fall into the ground, spiritual principle life, the way I function, it'll be alone. But if it dies more of the same is going to come. And then he says, um, if any man serve me, let him follow me. So we immediately turn our eyes off of falling in the ground and dying. We start looking at the teaching and go, where are you going? Is that, is that picture clear? And so we start going, look, I'm a follower of Jesus. No, get over here on the cross. Get over here and fall into the ground and die. That's what he's saying. And, by the way, he's going to be the seed that falls in the ground and dies. See? All right. So, um, uh, if any man serve me, let him follow me in this manner. And where I am, there shall, you be also, shall my servant be also. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. If you're going to serve Jesus in this manner of debt, life out of death, the Father's going to honor that. You go, I want to be, I want God to honor me and stuff like that. Being selfish and trying to produce that by some other means. See, no one's going to take the way of, of death unless they want to follow Jesus into death. 
No one's going to choose that. I didn't, you know. Jesus said, you didn't choose me. Boy, I sure didn't. You know, he tricked me. He tricked some of you. He brought you to this Bible school and you had no clue what he was going to drag you into. <laughs> you know? He, he tricked you and you were knee deep in it before you knew what happened. <laughs> Which is pretty much a bunch of you. I mean, there's very few of us that kept said, hey, I heard they're really teaching about death and I want to be on the bandwagon. <laughs> Guess what? I didn't either. I came out of Kenneth Copeland's ministry just to go to Bible school and ended up in a place they were teaching this, and I was knee deep in it before I realized it. <clears throat> I told Deb, I said, I feel like God ripped me off. <laughs> I mean, it, it felt that way. It felt like, yeah, raw, raw, just <laughs> And then I'm. I'm in quicksand and I can't get out of it. I'm going to die. I mean, it really felt that way. So if you're wondering, it's not my trick. I was tricked too. Okay. I was tricked too. He, he put donuts in the middle of quicksand. And I went for it. And for you, it would be something different. But he, he knows exactly what to put out in the middle of that. All right. <laughs> Jesus, when talking about the manner in which he wants you to bring forth fruit, said, I tell you the truth. Verily, verily, I, I tell you the truth. When Jesus says that, you know, can you imagine Jesus going, look, really, guys, I'm telling you the truth. That's not the way he's putting it. See, we're going, and we're going, I don't know, Jesus. Can we trust you? <laughs> what? <laughs> You know, you know, I, you know, I usually lie, but this time I'm telling you the truth, see. No, no, no. He's saying, look, this, this area of falling into the ground and die is right down God's, God's own truth. Did we change the numbers on this thing? Yeah. I'm erasing this because it could confuse people when they're trying to follow one tape after the other. <clears throat> so, I'll tell you the, the truth. This area is God's truth. He says, unless or accept, unless. It is only as we are willing to die that we can expect fruit. Do you believe that? Well, there, you know, so, okay. All right. Now, if you believe that, and if I believe that, then guess what? There is absolutely no place, no situation we can be in then we, that we can't bring forth fruit. Is that right or wrong? But in Christianity, you have to be a full-time minister or you have to be a missionary or you have to be this, am I right? That's what they think because, you're, oh, you're bringing forth fruit because, you know, you're doing this great work for God. Let me tell you, God is more likely to spot you than them if you're really, that's, your, that's Christ's death at work in you. Death worketh in me, but life toward others. I'm, I, you know, that, that's either a teaching or that's the truth. And Jesus said, I'm telling you the truth now when we're talking about this. I want you to know I am saying this to let you know this is the straight arrow truth of my heart. <clears throat> This absolutely requires death, and this is the image of Christ, a slaughtered lamb. This is the image of Christ. See, being a missionary, and I'm just using a missionary. I was a missionary, so, uh, so I'm not putting them down or anything. But being a missionary is not the image of Christ. The lamb is the image of Christ. Now, you can be a missionary and show that image, or you can be a missionary and just be a missionary. Serving God and doing what the seven churches did. <clears throat> we see the importance of this with Abraham and Isaac. Abraham's seed is still multiplying. And that is taking place for only one reason, death. If he was not willing to obey the command concerning death and sacrifice, God gave him a command concerning death and sacrifice. That was it. That's the command. See, we go... No, offer of your son. We get all, I don't know how we do it. We get all, it's like we get, we're in a 
jungle and we're trying to see our way through and stuff. The command was death. It, it could just as well have been death and sacrifice. That's what I want you to do. And this is going to fulfill everything that I said. If he was not willing to obey the command concerning death and sacrifice, he would have died having no fruit. No fruit. Death with no fruit. No seed. <clears throat> if there's no willing sacrifice, but we resist the altar, then no fruit comes from such a death. I'm, I'm thinking about what you wrote. I mean, it's so clear. Compare this with Luke 22:42. There Jesus says, not my will. Not my will. Okay? Not my will. This is the Son of God. <clears throat> this is the sinless Son of God. Not my will. Well, why are you saying that, Jesus? See, I asked that question years ago. I asked that question. I'm reading and Jesus says, not my will. I'm like, wait a minute. You're pure and holy and everything is perfect about you. Why would you say such a thing? Is there something wrong with you? Because I would say not my will because there's something wrong with me. You know what I mean? Oh, not my will. Die and be done. But Jesus is saying it. And let me tell you, that was, a, that was a door that opened some things for me. Because when I walked through it, I began to see, oh, my God, this is his nature. It's just, he, he's always about not my will, but that's not the end of it. See, it's not, what did I write here? Um, <clears throat> the explanation of those words does not mean that I just live in a manner of deprivation and self-abasement. There's something else behind it, something greater. Something greater, not my will but die and be done. Something greater, not me, but you. Anybody not, but, anybody familiar? Why do I even teach? <laughs> but it's there. It's there. It is always that spirit. It is the coin. It is the way of the Lord. He, it is never just about losing out. It is always for someone else. It's a heart, it's a spirit, it's a nature. It is unlike human nature. It is not us. That's why not I is, is, is something more precious because it says not I, but you. Oh, hallelujah. I love it. I do. <clears throat> he puts others above himself, in this case the Father. Death is the key to increase in many more who would become seed. Oh, my God. Understand that? Should I read again? Death is the key to increase many more who would become seed like this. This kind of spirit. And th how are we going to get it in the earth? How are we going to evangelize? How are we going to have enough classes? How are we going to? We're not going to do it through teaching classes. We're not going to do it through Bible school. We're not going to do it through, you know, one of the main purposes for the Bible school is to give enough, give enough teaching and enough crises to drive someone to the Lord in this manner. That's what it's about. It's not a utopia. It is about this. <clears throat> All right, so death is the key to increasing many more who would become seed. So every time I do, in the smallest thing or whatever, no matter how small, if I lay down my life, I'm doing world evangelization on the level that God wants more seed in the image of Christ, not just more Christians. Okay? <clears throat> if this is true, then the believer must come to a firm commitment along these lines. Of what? Trust death, the value of death, the value of little things, the value of, of, of being with the Lord all the time being with the lord all the time it's it's precious i mean it would sound precious but it is precious because this is where he revels this is the holy spirit loves this stuff jesus lives for it <clears throat> in the case of john 12 24 many seeds much fruit many seeds stands as our resurrection out of death, right? 
much fruit. If it died, much fruit, many seeds. That's our resurrection. But there's more. Excuse me. But though they come forth as resurrection out of our death, yet they also will become many seeds like the original seed who are capable of continuing the cycle by death. So it's our resurrection, but they're going to continue it by death because they're of that seed. I mean, isn't that beautiful? It really is. It's just, it's just, I mean, I almost said it's just gorgeous because, you know, really all we're talking about is a whole lot of deaths. How is that gorgeous? Oh, my God, it's Jesus. It's Jesus giving himself even now. He, he, he hadn't stopped. He hasn't stopped. He's still doing it through us. And he's doing it to bring forth more of the same kind of seed. See? You know, I mean, you don't, you don't plant a, 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 an orange seed and get an avocado, a bunch of avocados. What is this? You know, more seed after his kind. That's, that's the goal. That's fruit bearing. He's called you. He's chosen you that you would go forth and bear fruit, and this is how you do it. <clears throat> Revelation 14, 13 declares, blessed are the dead. <laughs> That's Revelation 14, 13. Blessed are the dead. 2 Corinthians 4, 11 and 12 follow suit with, for we who are alive are not always living in freedom, we who are alive are, this is my words now, we who are alive are not always living in freedom, but always, always, always given over to death. Why? For his sake. Right? <clears throat> Why do we do this? We do so that his life might be revealed. We always do this because it's a lifestyle and a nature. We all, always do delivered unto death. We always do this. We don't want to do any other way. We don't die for a period of time so that we can get a really happy resurrection period. Because if we comprehend what's just been said, the resurrection is these many seeds, not a real resurrection time period in our life so that we're happy and free from death. Would the lamb be happy free from death? No. <clears throat> I mean, if you looked at every lamb that was slain throughout Israel's history, every one of them, for, you know, millions upon millions, and you saw that as just Jesus, the Lamb of God, giving himself over and over again, then you would understand that that is his way. That's for him. He just made that picture for us so that we could see it. Always given over unto death that the life also of Jesus, see? <clears throat> if, you want, uh, <clears throat> if you want Jesus and his image seen in you, anybody want Jesus and his image seen in you? Do you? Really? 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 Well, then <laughs> this is how it will appear. It will be self-giving in itself. It will always be lamb-like. So then death work is at work in us, but life is at work toward you. Toward you. It's happening toward you. That you might have the same, not that you might have life, but that you might have the same seed. Yes, that is life, but that's his life. You can't. You know, don't tell me you want, I just, why do y'all talk about death all the time? I want to talk about life. This is the life. The lamb is the life. Always bearing about in the body. The selfless giving of the lamb. <clears throat> in 2 Corinthians 1, 9, we find another purpose for death. This verse shows that there is a God-given reason for death, that, that we would not rely on ourselves. <clears throat> yeah, that we would not rely on ourselves, see? There, folks, can I just say this right now? In this room, not, not counting Scott people, 
in this room, there's much too much reliance upon ourselves. That's not condemnation. I don't even have to know anything. <laughs> it's just we need more Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? No condemnation in that. It's just a reality. We are. I am. We're relying way too much on ourselves. That's one purpose for death is to bring us out of that because a lot of times we won't quit unless we're, uh, you know, it's like this. You won't quit unless you're crippled and laid up in bed or something. <clears throat> Like Peter, many say they will, they will or already are laying down their lives for Jesus. I will lay down my life. They, you know, they will or they're already laying down their life for Jesus, yet they do not want to appear weak or insignificant or not needed or used. <clears throat> okay, now that's, a, that's important. See, I'll lay down my life for you and I'll do it in a glorious manner. I mean, isn't that really kind of the thought? Don't you get that feel with him? And don't you get that feel with us? Oh, I'll, I'll lay down my life for you, Jesus. Yeah, I'll do it in a big way, and you'll be proud of me. And he's kind of going, whoa there, Sparky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, I just keep thinking about um, what you're just saying happened. Because it's done in Christ and we're not working in ourselves. You know, and so I'm, I'm like, the question is always before me is, Lord, how, how can this happen? How is, what, it, what is it that makes it real right. in me? Because, you know, because it's like hearing this teaching, then I can go out and try to practice, and that's, no. that's not it. No. And so, you know, uh, Lindsay said something to me this morning that just kind of spoke deeper to me than it, it ever has every time I read it. And that's where it just says, ask. Asking will be given. And, you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, I, mean, I hear all this and I desire it and I want it, but I know me to go out and find myself in a situation and do just what you're saying. So we have to press. Amen. You do, you do. Yeah, we covered a bunch of that in the early part of this, but but no one's going to press unless they see the value of death is the way I put it early on, but it's more than that. You do know that. It's the value of the lamb. It's the value of the true nature of Jesus. Is that valuable? All of us would be in hell forever, but that's still, that's still a wrong view because that's how it benefits us, but it's true. Without that nature, we'd all be in hell forever. We need to come like, like Paul did in, in uh, Galatians 2.20. You know, he, he says it all, but then he explains why. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So he saw I'm living now by the same thing that he lived by, because I saw that he loved me and gave himself for me. Now I love him and I'm going to give myself that he might live. I am crucified with Christ. Christ liveth in me. Same spirit. And it's a cycle of selfless giving. It's, it's beautiful. We keep saying that, don't we? Okay, so like Peter, many will say they're ready or uh, uh, they have or already are laying down their lives for Jesus, yet they do not want to appear weak, insignificant, not needed, or used. Now, if you don't believe that those things will come, if you are truly getting the nature of the Lamb formed in you, then you're, you're, you're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. Here's the difference. If by the time you get to that point, Christ is in you, it will be glorious. To the, the glory of God resteth upon you is what it says in Peter. Same guy that denied the Lord, said he wouldn't, said he would die and didn't. He got it. See, he's fellowshipping in those same sufferings now. See, and he's telling us about it. The spirit of glory resteth upon you. <clears throat> Paul said, God, you know, 
I, I will glory in infirmities and trials and this and that, that the power of Christ may rest upon me, that it might be of him. <clears throat> so, but these are the very elements. What, what are weakness, insignificance, not needed, used. But these are the very elements that give greater power to the death. Okay, now, now that's, that's important that you hear that. These things... When you add that to the death, like Jesus on the cross being despised and all this stuff, you're adding more power to it. That's why his was so powerful, because he took it all as if he did it. And the very things he hated as God, was, he was accused of and laid on him. You, we, we can't understand that. I mean, we don't. We don't understand that at all. We go, well, that's not good. It was horrible for him. Okay, here's the best way to, just, here's the, because <laughs> I experienced this one. <clears throat> Imagine the very thing that you hate in somebody else that you, you see is off in the Lord or something that is just, it just runs counter to your spirit and the way that you are and you see it at work and how ugly it is in somebody and you just go, God, that's just, it's just so ugly. Now imagine if God works circumstances where you appear that way to people and they start saying the very thing that you're nothing like in your being. And in fact, you despise that way, but you get to be accused of that. Try that one on. And guess what? If you're with the Lord in it, it's, it's, it is again glorious. If you're not... It's horrible. It's torture. No, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want to be in a situation like that. You know, I'm a young Bible school student. I just want to be happy. <laughs> well, they are, it's my understanding that Dallas Theological Seminary is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so th these things, weakness, insignificance, not needed use, but these are the very elements that give greater power to the death. For example, Isaiah 53 says that because he poured out his life, right? Remember it says because he poured out his life, but there's more. And um, because he poured out his life uh, unto death and was counted with the transgressors, do you see that extra element there? It, it's going to add power to it. The deeper the death, the greater the resurrection. Um, and was counted with the transgressors. Therefore, we do, we do not earn the image of God, but we must yield to God's manner proceeding and his heart concerning death and sacrifice. First, we submit to death with Christ in relationship to sin, the world, the devil. First. Only then, after we've done that, do we seek that the nature of the one who gave himself for these victories in our life be worked into our lives. The more we submit to the Lamb and allow him the throne within, which is, which is called what? Lie, uh, wife of the Lamb. Uh, allow him to on the throne within the more we are filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3.19. See? So, but this is painful. Going through all this. The more you're filled with the fullness of God. You know, you tell me, you know, what your true desire is. We see in Colossians, the more we yield to him concerning things within, the more enemies are defeated whereby he may be enthroned. We die, we die to desires for self-exaltation, to be honored, to be known, res respected, appreciated. We die to all of that. We die to it. S yeah, and, you know, we can say, yes, we do. But wait till somebody, you know... Uh, doesn't honor you or you're not you're never going to be known you know what was the deal I was talking about today about yeah maybe I can remember this thing some guy wrote me yesterday emailed me and he and in the email he said I really I was watching a video and I didn't realize but it was one of the videos on on uh, 
the CMI website. And the invasion of the original, I think is the name of it. And, um, and he said, uh, is there any way I can get a copy of the book you were reading from? Well, I remember when I was sharing that, I was actually reading out of my book, but I let, I didn't say it, but I let people believe that I was reading out of somebody else's book because they would have respected it more than if they knew I wrote it. So he's going, yeah, you mentioned the book that you were reading out of, and I'm going, yeah, I wrote that book, and, uh, and I think it's on uh, the, the website that, that y'all do, uh, and you know, you can get it, and it's downloaded for free. <coughs> um, but just, just for a moment, after I finished that little tete-a-tete, -tete, this little thought arose in me. Um, you know, that's pretty cool that some, you know, this foreign path that I wouldn't have expected, somebody has discovered, oh, by the way, and he said, I like your humor. <laughs> and somebody has discovered, you know, this, and they're contacting you. And the Holy Spirit jumped on me, and he, he took my mind. This is not what I was thinking, but this was the Holy Spirit building a case here because uh, he, he wanted to speak to me. So the Holy Spirit let that roll. This guy has, uh, um, has contacted you through some uh, avenue that you weren't expecting. And remember, this is the Holy Spirit. And he said, uh, and this, as if this were my mind, and this could be the door whereby you get discovered. Discovered. I got to get on, you know, American Idol or something. I need to be discovered. And and then so I'm 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 thinking I'm going along with this thought here. I'm not thinking that, but I'm going along with it. And then he says to me, "I thought you wanted to be hidden." And the contrast when he did all of that, I just went, "Oh my god, whether that was working in me or not, it was powerful." And I just went, how, you know, we, we have a religious mindset of what we believe where we're at and what we're about. But when little things come in, you know, we go, oh, maybe this is going to be the big break. Big break, really? I thought you believed in the cross. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I, thought, I thought your whole thing was that you wanted to decrease. You preached decrease your whole freaking life. You see what I'm saying? You see how incredibly powerful the Holy Spirit can get us. And I'm going, you know, I started, to, I didn't say this to him, but I started to go, really all I thought was. <laughs> but then I shut up real quick and said, yes, Lord. Absolutely. Go ahead, brother. It starts uh, Revelation chapter 14. And it's funny because I read it wrong because the Holy Spirit, I feel like, was kind of like, I don't know, saying it in a different, in a different way. But it's, it's uh, Revelation 14, 13. It says, uh, <clears throat> Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, as we shared before, who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works follow them. That's how I read it the first time. It was like, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Their own works follow them. Lest that be that. Yeah. And because <laughs> yeah. that's the very thing he's trying to get, get them away from. Is their exactly works. Right. See, and, and everybody's afraid of standing before God and the works that, you know, that with the works that we've done in, in our body or whatever. But, you know, a bunch of it's going to be Christ. And we want it to be more and more him. But again, back to what God is here, and that's why uh, you're reading that, Joseph, is, is to do that, we're going to have to decrease. And decrease, see, and, but see, every one of us know that, and we believe that to the max until we get out there, outside of a relig religious um, setting and somebody does something to us and and it's unfair and it's wrong and all this kind of stuff 
And that's an opportunity for decrease, but we don't see it there as that. This isn't that. This is just mean people in the world. Just mean people. What is wrong with you mean people? And God's going, what is wrong with you? You're supposed to be, you know, with me. With me. <clears throat> and so, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, I mean, it, it's going to take a breaking and it's going to take a real heart desire. You know, I've, I've said this a bunch lately. You know, we're going to have to love Jesus. We're going to have to love the Lamb more than we love ourselves. But it doesn't do any good to say that because we don't really know what it means to be the Lamb uh, accused, rejected, um, not treated fairly, not honored, not thought well of when you should have been, all this kind of stuff. Jesus was not only not thought well of, he, they said he has a demon. They said he's a dece he deceiveth the people. That is the exact opposite of him. He just bore it. He took it all in. He took it all into himself like a sponge, and he just soaked it up. And he went into death, and he died. But before he could die with it and, and put it to death, he had to die under his reactions to it. I could have called 10,000 angels. Okay, we know that. But see, here's the difference. Here's the difference, folks. We can't. He had the ability. He could have wiped them out. If we have the ability, folks, I'm telling you a bunch of times, we'd mess up. We'd destroy people. <clears throat> it takes a bigger man, I'm just putting it that way, it takes a bigger man to have the power and not to use it than it does somebody who is totally limited and poor and has no recourse and saying, well, I'll just lay down my life. Well, you understand, I mean, I know because the Lord's taken me through this little scenario several times to teach me, you know, with the prophets, he's done some of that stuff with me to teach me where he's at and how he sees things and what's going on. So he'll put me through something like that and I'll see it from his eyes out and I'll go, you know, this really, you know, this is really a big deal, um, you know. Uh, somebody says, well, I've never, you know, nobody's ever honored my ministry. Uh, the, the, I'm thinking now of when I was on Bolivar, and this guy comes into my office for counseling. He's a member of our church. He's only been there a short time, and he's got this uh, puppet ministry. He sits down all concerned, and he goes, Brother Randy, I just, you know, it's just, I, I, tr I try so hard now as a puppet ministry, and he said, I try so hard to, minister to people and everything and he, and he says nobody takes my ministry seriously and i just that's what i did i, just, <laughs> I went for god's sake you're it's puppets <laughs> <clears throat> well i say that to say we we can have this little ministry with nobody knows about it and everything and we go well i'm just going to be with you jesus in it okay that's okay. That's fine. Do, be with the Lord no matter what. Isn't that right? Be with the Lord no matter what. Don't look for certain circumstances. Die where you're planted. Instead of, instead of bloom where you're planted. Die where you're planted. But it's even greater to have a great ministry, an incredible ministry that's all this and that, and to die to that. That takes more Jesus. And that's why it was so incredible that God would come down and become a man and become lowly and, you know, on, down, down, down. That was what made it so incredible. That's the thing. All right, let's see. Um, I may stop here pretty quick. Um,
Yeah, I'm just going to read these last two sentences. We die to desires of self-exaltation. Um, well, it may take longer than I think. You know, self-exaltation, folks, is self. <laughs> I, don't care. I don't care how you hack it. It's self. You know, I've had pastors that I knew in this town, and some of you know that I used to be the head over the, the pastors, whatever it was called, what was it called? Pastors. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, Fellowship of Christian Pastors. And, and, I, and I had some of them come over here, and they'd say, why don't you have your name on the, th on the thing outside the deal, hanging on the sign? Pastor Randy Nussbaum. And I said, you know, because I'd rather people just come here and get Jesus. It's not important that they know who I am. And really, if they don't know who I am, is that really going to get them in here? I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> Pastor Randy Nussbaum, that don't mean nothing to me. You know? And if it's somebody who's heard me and they're, you know, ooing and gooing over what I shared instead of Christ, and they see my name, they'll go, oh, I've got to go there. So don't put it up, whether good or bad, whether right or wrong, don't put it up. Let's just be about Jesus. Self-exaltation is self. You, but here's, here's, here's how sneaky self is. Well, I need to get famous so that I can get people to the Lord, more people to the Lord. When people know my name, then I can get them to the Lord. All right, that sounds real good, and it sounds real, real common. That's like saying, you know, we need to get uh, Mick Jagger saved because people know his name. Really? I'm going to come to the Lord because Mick Jagger? <laughs> you know, I don't think so. That don't, that don't jive with me, man. <laughs> you know, I just need Jesus, okay, Mick? If you're saved, go live it. Get out the get the heck out of the way. <laughs> you know. Yes. like my Jesus. That's the way he deals with me. I, I've got a picture also. I'm <clears throat> so I, I walk into the banqueting room and I can see, you know, Jesus' seat up here and I can see, you know, I, I look around. So I go and, I, and I'm thinking I need to, I'm going to go take the lower seat. So I go and I take the lower seat and people start coming in and they start taking seats and stuff like that. And the camera pulls back, and it's like, Jesus here, another person here, and I'm right there. And the lower seat's way over here. <laughs> He's going, that is not the lower seat. In your mind, maybe. You know, <laughs> and the way you see things, that, well, you went pretty low for that, didn't you, big boy? <clears throat> 
So, all, so <clears throat> self-exaltation, to be honored. You know, my God, you know, we, here's the deal. Everybody needs to be honored on some level. They do. But here's the greater deal. That's a human trait. Um, it is. And, uh, and I, I agree with the scripture that says, honor to whom honor is due. But what is the basis of that? We say honor. We say honor to whom, who, who gave a big offering so that we could buy, uh, you know, and add a new part on the building or something. Honor to whom honor is due. We're saying honor is due to somebody who does something big, splashy, and whatever, or whatever. But God honors the lowly. God honors the weak. I mean, you know that. And it's clear in the scriptures. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world and things that are not and the weak things and all of that kind of stuff. That's what he honors. And he, and he proves that over and over and over. This is the way the lamb works. We think it is, you know, some sort of a Christian thing. Don't exalt yourself. Be a humble Christian. And if you exalt yourself, he'll bring you down. But if you humble yourself, so it's, to us, it's a Christian trait. I need to be more humble and less self-exalting. This, this is the way that he is. He is this way. If he sees somebody exalting themselves, even if they're, you know, buying an addition to the thing or something like that, if that's self-exaltation in the form of selfless giving, he'll humble that. Okay, and then people will go, well, you know, honor to whom honor is due. I was due some honor and nobody, you want to do honor for something that came out of that spirit. God won't honor that. He'll humble it. He'll bring that down. Yes. I, I, I can be part of this so easily where it's, I'm studying the dynamics of his death, but I'm missing the fellowship of his heart. And until I lose the focus on his death and find him, the death doesn't work because there's still a focus on me entering into the dynamics of his death by choosing the low seat. And, but I'm not caught up in, in the nature of the Lamb and fellowshipping in who he is, and he's the one who is gracing me with inhabiting my heart in this. I'm trying to figure out and, and incorporate the dynamics of his death into somehow my experience, but it's not really a wife just finding him yielding to him. Um, and I think it's a trap like of motivation that I can get caught up in. It. You, it's like dissecting the lamb but never really just falling in love with it and eating it, breathing it out. It, you can spend a lifetime dissecting the dynamics of his death and totally miss his heart. That's right. And just wonder why there's no fellowship it's the dynamics of this death. It's not him in just pure love. Like I'm just caught up in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll end with this. I was thinking about <coughs> loving Jesus today. I was thinking, um, I was thinking just as a pastor and I've uh, and as a minister and conference speaker. I've looked over hundreds and hundreds of people in one location and you know in different locations a lot and a lot a lot of people and if I said how many of you love Jesus pretty much everybody would say they love Jesus okay which the greatest is love so <clears throat> but if you get down to the and I'm kind of going along with what you're saying here if you get down to the motive um, and you really really and if, and if a person could be real enough about their motive that you said, why do you love Jesus? If they could go back and they could think all the way through to now, well, I love Jesus because when I was bound for hell, Jesus died for me. And, you know, uh, and it, it, it all run along that line, okay? <clears throat> That's not a bad thing. A lot of the things that we do are not bad things. They're just not pointed in the right direction. They're not focused on him. <clears throat> They're focused on what he does for us. 
Okay, so I love Jesus, and I know I do love Jesus. I love Jesus because my life was a wreck, and I was into drugs, and I was doing this and that and everything, and, and uh, you know, and I found Jesus, and he brought me out of that mess, okay? Or, you know, I had a deep, empty place within me, and Jesus filled it, or, you know, on and on and on. But all of those are basically the same thing. I love Jesus for what he did for me, or what he does for me. Okay, <clears throat> so as I was, and I think this was today, yeah, it was, and I was med just, I just meditate on these things. I don't, I don't know anything. I'm a blind man. I don't, I don't, I just meditate. And the Holy Spirit, if he wants to talk, he goes, hey, you know, and I go, Ugh. I'm not only blind, I'm stupid, you know, and, uh, and, and so he said, he said, when some, when someone discovers me, the lamb, if he would say that. If someone discovers me and they actually saw that as beautiful and they fell in love with the selflessness of it, the whole, whether they had it or not, or it worked for them or not, they just went, this is, this is beautiful beyond words to me. You are, because this is you. This is the way that you are and you actually fell in love with Jesus. That's completely different than the other kind of love. You can love Jesus for doing all that and never really know who he is. Never know that he's a lamb. Never know the, the, the beauty of that nature. You, you know, and you just go out. And that's why a lot of times when we picture you know, worshiping Jesus or whatever, we're seeing the bearded guy with the robe and sandals on the throne. We go, I love you, Jesus, because you saved me. And, and I'm not trying to make fun. I'm just, I'm trying to show that the, how far that will go in his heart. You know, I mean, after a while, I'm glad you love me for what I do for you. But, you know, and uh, to, to press past, you know, like the bride, to the, the bride who wants to become wife, as it were, to press past all the things that people are getting while they're following Jesus. <clears throat> And to start observing, and I, I do that here. I do that a lot in the Word, but, but the Holy Spirit, if he doesn't show me, I don't get it. To press past and, and to not be satisfied and to just, you know, go, I, I just, I want to know you, and I want to know your heart, and I want to, I want, if, I'm going, if I'm supposed to be in your image or if I'm supposed to be your wife, I would really like to be with you where you're at. It's, and that's what he said, so that you might be with me where I'm at, where I'm at uh, John 14. Um, that's what he's wanting, us to be with him where he's at instead of him be with us where we're at, which is, again, taking care of our stuff. Um, to do that would bring unspeakable joy to his heart, unspeakable joy because you can't speak it you cannot speak it yes. you know um and to respond towards him in that way uh who can who can describe that who can describe i mean the closest that we've come i guess is uh um mary bethany okay but it's not it's, it's, I mean, it, it is, but it's not. It's not the tears that she weeps, but it is. You know what I'm saying? But it is, because it's not just tears. It's not taking her hair and wiping his feet and kissing his feet or whatever. It's not that, but it is that. Because something has happened in her that sees him beyond just the savior of the world. And, um, uh, and let's just say her touch, her touch. 
can't describe that. There's no way you can describe that. There's no possible way because only Jesus knows what that is and he probably would never try to describe it to anybody because it's, it's holy ground, it's precious. It's, he wouldn't, he wouldn't. Um, he would just know it, you know, he'd just know it. And that's all that was important to him, see? Because so much is constantly going out to everybody and virtue going out to everybody and, and healing and blessing and salvation. It's just, he's just, he's just a giving machine. He's just pouring, constantly pouring out for others. And it's so rare that something turns around like the 10th leper, you know. And even that was a small thing, but, it, but someone turned around. Amen. Come back that direction, and it was Jesus. It was a big deal to Jesus. I know that we go, well, well go and be made whole. We just see it as another religious thing, and praise God, and all this kind of stuff. But in his heart, see, he's not going, oh, this, that was so religiously well done, Mr. Leper. You know? It's not that. That's, that's, he's not religious like we are. And our religion, I've said it before, is getting in the way of us finding Jesus. It's getting in the way. So everything I just described can't be described because it's not tears. And it's not kissing his feet, or it's not, you know, you can't describe it. It has to just be there. And if it's there, he knows. I know he knows. Because he lives for that union to be complete like that. That's him. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your son, and we thank you that your Holy Spirit is allowing us um, entrance into holy ground, into areas that really we don't deserve to be. We probably shouldn't be on one front, but you are doing it. And it's not a worthiness on our part, but it is, um, it is to our hearts precious, precious. And if we can just hear what the Spirit is saying, not to the churches, but to the to the worshipers of the Lamb to become more than worshipers. And if we could just hear what the Spirit says to the followers of the Lamb that even following in this selfless way is still not enough for him. For us, yes, of course, all of it's enough for us. But to come to that place where we're so flowing with the Spirit, we're saying the same thing. We're not trying to hear what the Spirit says to the church. We're not trying to hear what the Spirit says to the followers of the Lamb. We are saying with the Spirit, come, come. The Spirit and the Bride are talking the same language, loving Jesus, exalting Jesus, wanting him to be above them. So thank you. Thank you. Please don't give up, Holy Spirit. Please don't give up on us. We stray, we falter. But our deepest heart and our core cries out. And when you touch our core like this, our core cries out. And this is what we want, not for us but for him, Holy Spirit, for Jesus, for Jesus' sake, for Jesus' sake. Oh, Holy Spirit, how many times is that used in the Bible and we don't get anything like what, what you're saying it means now? Not doing it for our sake, but for his sake. Not about us, but about him. So, <clears throat> We're sorry we're stubborn and hard-hearted at times, but stay with us, Holy Spirit, and don't give up, not for us sake, not for our sake, but for Jesus' sake, in his name, and for his sake we pray, amen.